let's start this um, lecture or this new video with a review problem. So in the last classes or the last videos, we've seen adders and subtractors. And so here the question is, if you have a 4-bit adder, how long does it take to compute with this particular architecture? So you have these sort of boxes here. Each box is a full adder. And at the right-hand side, there's a gate implementation of a full adder. So you have the circuit here consisting of two XORs that computes the sum and then the slightly bigger circuit um, that we also derived in class that gives you the carry. OK, and so now each of these gates has a one nanosecond gate delay. And you ask, what's the overall delay until you get the, the complete answer? Good. So as always, I would you know please stop the video, think about the problem, and then come back and uh, see the, the answer. So here's how I would approach this. So in um, sort of think about it layer or um, bit by bit. So if you first focus on the first um, full adder here, where that adds up A0 and B0, then you realize that for this adder, the carry in is 0, right? So the first circuit component computing the sum here will still have a gate delay um, of 2. But in the second component here that computes the carry out, you can immediately take into account that carry in here is 0. And so adding together anything with 0 um, will result in 0. So you kind of ignore the upper branch here. And really, all you have to look at is this A and B that's or together with 0. So it's, again, a two gate delay operation. So basically, this whole circuit here has a gate delay of 2 nanoseconds. OK? Now moving on to the next layer, you realize that all the A's and B's, all the inputs, are applied at the same time. So in every single layer of this circuit, the XOR of A and B, the OR of A and B, the AND of A and B that occur here are calculated within the first nanosecond of the computation. So once that's done, um, you're just kind of waiting for the carries to ripple through. And so effectively, the, the gate delay it takes to, to compute um, the sum is just one gate delay once you have A or B, one additional gate delay. Um, and the gate delay for this carry out is going to be essentially, or the, the overall delay for the carry out is going to consist of two gate delays um, due to adding this carry in to the OR of A and B and then ORing it together with um, this A with A and B. Okay? So this is an additional two nanoseconds. Two nanoseconds. So these two are completely identical. And then the last one's a little different because as shown here, we are sort of, or, or as you maybe remember, is that we are sort of working with this odometer math where we have fixed uh, width of the number. So we don't actually care, at least for addition here, what the carry out is. And so we don't need to do this computation. And so it really just adds, once you have A or B pre-calculated, you just have to wait for the carry to arrive. The carry in to arrive, and it takes you one more gate delay due to this XOR here. Um, to get the final result. So this is just one nanosecond. And so overall, you have a seven nanosecond delay or time um, computation time. OK, hopefully this was clear. If not, um, you know, think, think a little bit about it. I think it's not that complicated, but it, uh, it's useful to sort of understand how the information propagates through a complicated circuit like this. So now let's move on to the main topic of this video, which is a new type of sort of basic circuit element. So specifically, I'm going to talk about um, multiplexers, decoders, and encoders. They're essentially stand standard routing elements for interconnections, but they're also, in some ways, general purpose logic elements, as you'll see. So the idea here is that we'll build up, so, so far, we've kind of thought of our logic circuits essentially as constructed out of AND and, and OR gates, which you might realize in sort of a transistor-transistor logic um, chip, literally have a few small AND gates on a, on a chip. 
But now we kind of want to switch to a different paradigm where you have these more general logic elements that are, to some extent, reprogrammable as you actually have them in, in an FPGA. Good, but to introduce these, these new systems, I kind of want to use a very, um, somebody's old school example, which is that we're going to try and design a basic telephone system. OK, so just the, the ingredients of our telephone system are shown here. Um, so everybody has a phone like this. OK, there's an earpiece up here that allows you to listen to what other people say. There's a mouthpiece you can talk into and talk to the people. There's a bell that rings when somebody's trying to call you. And there's a start button that you push when you're trying to call somebody else. And importantly, as you'll see, this is a very old system that sort of works with a phone operator. So when you press the start, what happens is that you'll actually alert the operator. OK, so this is a very small company. So there may be a CEO, a vice president, um, somebody in the mailroom, and an engineer. There's also the operator. All of these people have a phone, and we'll now try to build a phone system that allows these people to talk to one another in their company. OK? So let's sort of just go through it in the order in which an actual phone call might occur. So probably the first thing that's going to happen is that somebody wants to make a call, and they push their Start button. And in this particular company, the only thing that, that or what, what should happen is that this alerts the operator that somebody's calling. And moreover, the operator should know who's calling. right? And that's the device that allows the operator to know that is called an encoder. So let me draw that here. So this is an encoder. It's a device that takes multiple wires in. So they all, all of the, oops, sorry, that's wrong. All of the start buttons are connected here to this encoder. OK. And then the, en the output, the encoder here, the main output of the encoder actually is a code that corresponds to the wire. So you can imagine that each of these people here has a, a code. So this might be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0. So if the CEO calls, the code that gets displayed down here is 1, 1. OK, so an encoder is a device that takes multiple wires in. And it just displays the, the code corresponding to the wire that is true. So the assumption here is that only one person calls at the same time. We'll, we'll think about this a little later. And in addition here, or how to deal with this uh, in a bit. In addition here, the encoder has an output that connects to the bell of the operator. So whenever somebody calls, their code or their phone number is displayed, and the operator is alerted. That's step one. Now the second step is, of course, that the operator needs to be able to talk to the CEO to kind of ask um, who she or he wants to, to call, to actually talk with. Okay. Now there's another device here, and this is the multiplexer. Okay, and I'm going to draw this here. This is trapezoid shape. There's two switches here. I'll explain in a second what that is good for. And this is connected to the earpiece. And it's also connected to the mouthpiece of every everybody else in this company. OK, something like that. 
And what this does, what a multiplexer does, that's the mux multiplexer. What a multiplexer does is that you can switch these two inputs, these two controls, to the ID of any of these four wires. So if you switch it to 1, 1, you might select this particular wire. And then the data coming in on this wire will be copied onto the output wire. If you se select a different ID, data from a different wire will be copied. I mean, you've actually seen multiplexes already several times in this class, but here this is sort of a nice um, use of them. <coughs> OK, so now once the operator knows that the CEO has called, um, he can switch the, the multiplexer controls here to 1-1 one, one and actually listen to the CEO. And the CEO might say, oh, I want to talk to the engineer, right? And then, of course, everybody in this company sort of has the same system. So everybody has an, a multiplexer here. So they can listen to everybody else. And so eventually, we'll be able to connect the CEO directly to the engineer. But before we can do this, we have to do one last thing, which is we have to alert the engineer that the CEO um, wants to talk to her. So the way we're going to do that um, is by using yet a different device, which is called the decoder. OK. So the decoder, again, has two control switches here that can be switched to any um, number that you like. So again, if we want to alert the engineer, we'll switch these switches to position 0, 0. There is also an input here, which is the start button pushed by the operator. And then there's wires here connecting to all the different um, bells. Right, so now the operator can switch this to 0, 0. And what's going to happen is that this code that you input will be decoded. And the decoding here means that it, one of the wires on the output corresponding to that code, so in this case 0, 0, will be true. And hence, the bell will ring at um, the engineers. And then at this point, the engineer um, can pick up the phone, and she can talk to the, to the operator using um, this multiplexer connection, and eventually um, can also be connected to the CEO using a different setting on the multiplexer. OK, so this is a very simplistic um, phone system, but I think it sort of nicely explains these basic, the use of these basic devices. So the encoder is a device that has multiple wires coming in. One of them is true at the same time. And the output of the encoder is the code corresponding to the wire. So in this case, there's four wires, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 are their codes. And these codes get displayed corresponding, or whichever code is, uh, whichever wire is active, that's the code that gets displayed. The decoder is the opposite. So you're actually putting in a code. And then one of the four output wires in this case becomes true. And then the multiplexer is a little more sophisticated. It's essentially you can set a control, a, a couple of control inputs in this case corresponding to a specific um, wire coming in. But instead of just activating or this wire or something like that, you actually copy the data coming in from that wire onto an output wire.